Jane Keeley and this is Voice of a Creative and today I'm going to talk to you about 2018 and do my kind of review of the year. Now 2018 was quite a big one for me in terms of um, kind of entering the sewing community so I decided to post my first sewing related picture which was some selfless sewing and that was in April and since then I've been on a kind of a massive journey because I've met so many new people and I've really kind of engaged with the sewing community a little bit more and that's been really lovely and I'm really pleased that I took the opportunities that I did this year and did the things that I wanted to because actually it's made 2018 much better. So I heard about the sewing community first of all in 2017 when I got a subscription to Simply Sewing magazine and my free gift with that was some sew over it patterns and I didn't know what sew over it was and so then I kind of looked online and on YouTube and then I got into watching YouTube videos and then eventually obviously this year May 2018 I decided to start my own YouTube channel so <clears throat> I just wanted to talk a little bit about the things I've been involved with this year and the patterns that I've used and kind of the things that I've done because I thought it would be good for me to look back on later on. I will be doing a separate sewing plans video for 2019 um, that will be up on Sunday so you will be able to see that as well. So my year in the sewing community started in April so I can only kind of go from April. I am really upset that I have been sewing for I think 13-14 years and I have not documented any of the things that I've made basically. I have the odd photo here and there but it was amazing to be able to look back this year and actually know how many items I'd made and what patterns I'd made and what fab fabrics I'd used and things like that which was amazing. Really pleased that I've started to do that now and hopefully this year, the 2019, I'll be able to continue to do that as well. So um, this is the notebook that I use to record everything and um, I basically write down any challenges and things that I've made uh, and that is from April this year that I started doing that and I've got my Pink Coat Club stickers on the front as well. So I've done a bit of a review, I've used Instagram a lot for this because actually it's really easy, it's almost like a little journal in Instagram. So first I'm going to talk about the sewing challenges that I got involved with this year and I pretty much tried to uh, get involved with any of the ones that I knew about. <laughs> so the first one I got involved with was hashtag SOI selfless sewing and that was the first one I did in April and that was so over it selfless sewing month so they kind of put out a challenge to actually sew for other people during the month of April and I actually made some tops for my mum which I hadn't made her some clothes in quite a while so I've been so busy with work and I also made my husband a jumper and a jumper for a friend as well so I actually managed to do quite a few things um, in regards to that and it really helped remind me how much I love sewing for other people so that's definitely something that will feature in my 2019 plans. I also got involved with the hashtag sew out of this world challenge which was run by um, at sew loco which is a fabric shop and that was the challenge where I wanted to try something that I haven't sewn before basically. So I chose the vintage shirt dress and that was the first kind of main dress picture of me that I posted on Instagram to start this kind of dressmaking sewing community journey. <laughs> so I've now got Bramble with me so if you hear me owling that's who it is basically. Okay so the next challenge I took part in in May was Me Made May and this is the first time I took part in it. I did see other people's posts the year before and I managed to take a photo all of the days apart from one which was amazing. And then I took part in the Sew Together for Summer challenge and that was in June and then that was a wrap dress. So I tried a few different wrap dress patterns and my favourite out of the ones that I did was the Ultimate Wrap Dress by Sew Over It. And I really enjoyed that and it's likely that I will make that again. Um, I want to make a few changes to it, maybe adding a gathered skirt for that one. I also took part in the Great Big Pattern Swap. So that was run by the Polka Dot Palace and the, zip, the Zipper Foot. And that was where you posted your patterns um, in a picture on Instagram and then you swapped with other people from around the country. And that was really good because it's a chance to get rid of some, some of my patterns that I wasn't really going to use. I also took part in the Cozy Cardi Challenge which was run by the Stitch Sisters and Amanda I Sew A Lot 
Uh, I entered two cardigans in that challenge as well which was really lovely and I love cardigans um, so it's nice to see everybody else's makes. Also I took part in So Photo Hop which was run by House of Pin Pin Hero but unfortunately um, I managed a couple of days in that one and then I had to stop because it was just a bit stressful to keep going with that photo challenge. Then I did manage BP Sovember which is run by Bimble and Pimble but again I did about 20 days I think and then I was playing catch up all the time um, I do think a photo a day challenge actually to find things to photograph is a bit of a struggle for me um, Me Made May was easy because you just took a picture of what you were wearing that day but it becomes a bit more difficult when you have to find the things and photograph and then it's not very good light and well then I took part in the One Week One Pattern 2018 which is run by Soisfaction so really enjoyed that one. I chose my Blackwood cardigan and my jersey dress pattern and managed to keep going for the whole week um, and actually really enjoyed that, thinking a little bit more about what I was wearing and what things I actually really enjoy wearing. And then I also took part in my sew uh, Sewing Secret Santa, which is run by the Camden Stitch. And that was really fun because it meant that I could make something for somebody else and get something um, handmade or get something from somebody else in return. And that was really lovely. I got my lovely sewing machine cover from that challenge as well. So quite a few different challenges throughout the year and I'm hoping to take part in even more next year. I really enjoy that challenge of kind of having a brief and then actually sticking to it. So Cocoa Hour Crafts at the moment is running the hashtag proudest make. So I feel like my proudest make for this year was my YouTube channel. Um, it was a huge leap to do that and it was quite scary but I'm getting more and more used to it now talking to a camera and actually I'm really still enjoying it and it's really nice to have something which is a break from work, um, something that I can do and I kind of have to keep up with each week and that's really nice for me to have. But other than that, definitely uh, my vintage shirt dress was my proudest make. That was the first time that I'd done buttonholes, it was my first time working with woven fabrics for a while, first time working with an indie pattern and it came out really nicely, it fits really well. Unfortunately I haven't worn it many times, um, I think I need to shorten the sleeves on it but definitely a good achievement. I was really happy with that one. Recently I got my overlocker and I made my first overlocked t-shirt on it, which was my Christmas t-shirt, which I got from uh, the fabric from Lubadoo Fabrics. And was really proud of that just because the overlocker is such a scary thing. And the fact that I was able to make a t-shirt on it just was amazing. And um, I've made lots of things on it since, so much so that I, went over went through a pin and now I've broken the blade but I've ordered a new blade so hopefully um it will get fixed um that was a bit annoying actually I was in the middle of making something and then it, the pin stopped it because I couldn't see the pin so basically don't sew with pins in an overlocker is the is the moral of that and the other thing is I made a me made holiday wardrobe so I was really happy about that so when I went to Japan in August all of the things I made for it I wore and I took some really beautiful pictures in those items and that really helped make the holiday even more memorable um, as well as the culture and just beautiful places that we went as well. So the next thing is uh, the events that I managed to uh, go to. Now there were a few things that I uh, managed to get tickets for which was amazing and some things that I was just like do you know what I just need to go so I did do a bit of driving to get to some of these but actually I met some amazing people and it was a fantastic chance to just kind of get more involved with the community so the first one I went to was the big summer stitch up which was run by Sois Faction and that was in July and that was really fun I met lots of people there and got to visit the beautiful shop um, that Sois Faction has it's really beautifully laid out and things and then I went to the Like So Amazing pop-up shop, that was also in July. So that was in a space in Bristol, but amazingly now, she is actually getting her own shop space. So I'm really looking forward to that opening. Then I went to the Sewing Weekender. So I got up really early and managed to get a ticket for that one, which was fantastic. There was about 100 people there, so kind of limited in the tickets. And that was really fun. I met lots of sewing people. And it was really scary, as in you're just meeting random people. Um, but I met some really lovely people and I'm still talking to those people now and I've met them again and things. So that was really good. And that was run by The Fold Line in August. And then I went to Sue Brum. So I went with um, a friend who 
runs um, a sewing group that I go to and Sarah from Like So Amazing and we met up with lots of other people there including Charlotte from English Girl at Home who is the one that organises Sobram and we took a trip to Barry's and we also got to go to Guthrie Gartney which I really enjoyed, that was a really beautiful shop as well. Then I went to the socialite soiree, so I went to the afternoon tea and then to the party which was run by the Stitch Sisters, Like So Amazing and Gingerella J and that was in November and that was amazing um, and it was in Bristol which I really enjoyed so I was really glad of that as well. And I have been going to a monthly sewing meetup, it's the first Friday of the month, it's in a church hall in Downend and I've been going to that um, since April and it's really fun it's quite a, it's a kind of smaller group but it's nice to go and talk sewing talk crafts and talk to some different people every month and I will um, share some more details about that I don't run it but I'll share some more details about that for those of you that are in Bristol because you could come along to that as well um, that was really nice to go to that that was one of my first uh, meetups that I went to and actually everyone was so friendly and it was, it was a really nice sense of community there as well so my favourite mate this year was my socialite soiree outfit so that was a dress that I made and I'll post a picture so you can see and I also made a little cropped cardigan a cropped blackwood cardigan to go with that one so that was my favourite uh, outfit of this year just because I loved the fabrics and I felt really kind of me in it basically and I also really like this dress which I'll post another picture and it's fabric from Stoff and Steel it's a wildflower viscose fabric and it's my self-drafted jersey dress and I made it for my holiday to Japan so um, that was another favourite make of mine whenever I put that on I feel really happy so upskilling so my I wanted to do some upskilling this year so actually improving my skills I actually made the Kate shirt from Sew so Over It, the Work to Weekend ebook, and that was slightly different because like, you had to do a covered button placket and then you also had to do a collar stand, and that was the first time that I'd done both of those things. But actually, it turned out really nice, and I even managed to do some adjustments like a forward shoulder adjustment, and I adjusted the neckline slightly and included the darts. I did another adjustment. Oh, I did a sway back adjustment as well and that was that turned out really well so really pleased with that but I really had to kind of really focus to get those perfect and also my Evelyn blouse my pattern test I'd never done front French seams before when I received that pattern and in that pattern all of the seams are enclosed even the sleeves so if you want to upscale using French seams definitely have a look at the that pattern and I will uh, link it below anyway. Now, how many items did I make this year? Now, people have been posting their numbers on Instagram. Well, I made 80 items this year. So I do make a lot of things and I kind of realised that, but yeah, 80. Now, actually, out of that, 23 of those items were for other people. So my husband, my sister and my mum. So it's not that I made 80 items for myself and a few of those items I don't actually have anymore. They stretched out or they didn't work out or I just didn't wear them so I passed them on to somebody else. But yeah, that does mean I made 57 items for me, um, which is a lot. And I think, I, I don't mind that. I so quit like I, I do so quickly but I think this this year 2019 I definitely want to try doing some more sewing for other people or slow sewing so that actually I don't have all of these items to kind of wear okay the last bit then so my top five patterns so I put all of the things I made into a spreadsheet with the fabrics I used and the shop that I got it from and um, all the patterns and things and I came up with a top five of ones that I'd made the most of. So my top one was my self-drafted jersey dress. Um, I think that was kind of an obvious top one. Um, I made 12 of those during this year. But I do wear them to work every day. And I did make some summer dresses. And I did have to kind of get rid of some of the dresses I had. Because unfortunately they'd faded. So definitely kind of looking into ways to prevent that this year. My next second pattern was the Blackwood Cardigan by Helen's Closet. So I actually made eight of those this year. Um, and that is the first time I've made a cardigan. But really glad that came in second place. It's a fantastic pattern. Definitely try it out if you're looking for a cardigan pattern. Number three, the Hudson pants. So I actually made six pairs. Now three of these pairs were short. One for my husband, two for me and then two pairs of trousers, one jogging bottoms and one in ponte. 
and then I made six plantain teas so that is a free pattern by Deer in Doe which is a really lovely pattern as well so definitely give that one a try and the last one is the M722 uh, McCall's pattern now I think that's the raglan sleeve jumper pattern well it's a top but I use it as a jumper so that one and I made six of those as well so three four and five I made six of each so actually you, you know they could be tied for third place so my top pattern companies for 2018 were Helen's Closet uh, I actually made three of her patterns and really love all of the makes so I've got the Elliot sweater which I'm planning on making a lot more of the Blackwood cardigan again fantastic um, pattern and I have made a couple of York pinafores I'm, I'm looking forward to her next patterns because I do really like um, her patterns the next one is um, McCall's so I made a few different ones of their patterns as well I find that they fit me quite well and they're quite easy to make and then also um, self-drafted now I know self-drafted isn't a pattern company but I do tend to self-draft a lot of things whether that's tracing from other items of clothes or kind of <clears throat> just making it up for me um, sewing is something to be really creative so I do just sometimes make it up and hope that it turns out right and most of the time it does <laughs> turn out okay so that was my review of 2018 so I think it's been a fantastic year for me in terms of kind of entering the sewing community starting up blogging starting up vlogging um, and making lots of new patterns and things and I've got my eye on lots of new patterns and want to get a lot more involved with the community um, doing a bit more blogging and things in the next year so look out for my next video about my sewing resolutions and my sewing plans for 2019 I will pop that up on Sunday thank you so much for watching if you liked this video please press the thumbs up and subscribe if you want to hear more from me goodbye <laughs>